Hey guys, I'm Karan Bidani from Mobi Scrub and I'm back with the top 10 apps for September. Like always, my aim is really to help you get the most out of your Android smartphone and be excited to use apps that can benefit you on a daily basis. Now the first app I want to talk about is called Droop. Now these days you use multiple apps to communicate with people over WhatsApp, Messenger, Hangouts, text messages, etc. And you have to open these apps independently. Droop makes all that go away. With just a flick, you gain access to all your favorite contacts and even recent contacts and just drag and drop them on app icons depending on how you want to interact. So if you drop them on the text message icon, you send them a message. If you drop them on the email icon, it opens up your default email app, for example, Gmail in my case. It also has an inbuilt T9 dialer that you can use to access your contact list and make calls directly. And there are also multiple themes available that allow for a certain level of customization. Now, the second app is called Memory Map, basically a map view of how much space is being taken up by various files on your phone in a more visual format that helps you decide what you need to delete and what you need to keep. Zoom in to see more details of individual files and folders. You can even long tap on the folder name to see what kind of files are there in that folder. So it could be a combination of audio and video files or images and documents, depending upon the folder type. Now, you can also search for specific files by simply tapping on their, um, you know, typing in the extension and going through files that correspond to your search. For example, .mp3, it lists all the files that have mp3 as an extension and you can play them as well. And to really help you get the complete package, just install FX, which is a file explorer that you can use to, you know, cut, copy, move, paste files from one folder to the other. And you can even view files in folders in different kinds of views, such as icon style, grid style, or even list style. You can also see by usage on disk, the more the colors on the grid on the right, the heavier that folder. Needless to say, you can obviously sort files alphabetically or by date or by type of the file. You can even bookmark certain locations that you visit often so that you can store them on the left menu for quick access. Uh, in terms of customization, you have quite a few options. You can choose between light and dark themes and even change the primary color code. So for example, I just got red. So, uh, and if you were to get the FX Plus, which is, you know, you'll get seven day free trial anyway, uh, you can even install, uh, you know, your Dropbox, SugarSync, Google Drive, OneDrive, just put in the username and password and on the left hand side, it's going to show up anyway. You can even add FTP server locations so you can access files on remote servers, which is just brilliant. The next app is called Twilight, one of my favorite bedtime apps. Now, most of us read content before going to bed, but I hate it when the screen's brightness starts pinching my eye and it gets really frustrating. Now, what Twilight does is that it adds a layer of red tint on your screen, which reduces the quantity of blue light that is being emitted and is responsible for actually causing trouble with your sleep cycle. And it also ensures that the light is dim enough to not cause any trouble. In fact, the app is so well-timed and synced with your sunset timings in your local region that it would start dimming the screen accordingly, ensuring you get a good on time sleep. You can manually change color, temperature, intensity, uh, brightness levels to suit your taste. And you can even save this combination as a profile and activate them on the fly. And if you ever think that you just want to turn the damn thing off temporarily or forever, just light the notification panel uh, from the top and tap on pause. And talking about sleep, there's another app that ensures you get up at the perfect moment in the morning and it's called Sleep Better by the same guys who introduced the Runtastic app. The app works quite simply. You set up the time you want to wake up and also notify the app in case you have done any special activity before hitting the bed. And then you can just keep the phone next to you or your pillow and sleep off. Now, obviously, please ensure that your phone is plugged in and the app needs to stay on, but it really would never cause a problem. The phone requires a bit of calibration the first time you run it, but that's about it. But really guys, the best part is that it just understands through your sleep cycle when would be the best time to wake you up. And that's the beauty of the app. And if you were to actually open the app and go into statistics, it will always, it'll also tell you when you had the most sound sleep and when you were a little fidgety, you know, it's all graphical so you'll know everything. The next app is called Snowball, an app that understands what notifications are important to you with time and also helps you take actions depending on what the notification is. So if you pull down the notification panel, Snowball changes it to its own user interface, clubs important notifications at the top and some import unimportant ones below it. And the one that stays forever are just in the uh, hide section. The setting toggles and some handy tools like calculator, uh, the camera, clock, brightness levels, uh, Snowball settings as well as system settings move to the first screen and you can always go to it if you wanted to. To set the priority of a particular notification, you can just slide it from the right to the left and then you can either mark it as not important or just 
set its status to hide and it goes into the last snowball screen. If you're done with the notification, you can clear it by simply swiping it from the left to the right. But one of the really cool features is how these notifications provide you with contextual ways of interacting with the notification, so I can reply right there. The next app is called Clock by Google, one of the most simple and easy to use clock apps. So obviously you can set up multiple alarms. Um, if you were to uh, expand the, the, the alarm setting screen, you could actually just set up a time, wonderful UI, and you know you could just fix the days as well. Apart from that, you can also um, have a time section where you can see the local time and also add multiple locations. So just tap on the globe sign and feel free to add any city from across the globe. Then you also have a timer section, so you can pretty much just set the timer and uh, push the start button. You've got a plus one increment. Uh, so basically every time you want to increase the stopwatch, you can do that by a minute. Uh, sorry, the timer by a minute. And then you've got the stopwatch. Of course, it just calculates seconds as you go, but it's also really easy to create laps. So you just tap the, the lap icon and it starts doing it. Uh, if you pull down the notification panel, you've got both of them lying right there. So if you were to reset, stop, pause the timer, or the stopwatch, you can do all of that from the notification panel itself. The next app is called LastPass, and it's really just about storing usernames, passwords, and some critical information that you would ordinarily either carry around with you in a secure place, or you would just have to remember that in your brain. Now with every website asking for some sort of registration or payment information, it can get really difficult. And it only makes sense to have all of that stored on your smartphone because you're always going to use your smartphone everywhere. Now the app lets you store bank account, credit card information, email account, insurance, and some random membership details as well. Passport information, stuff that you basically might need any day, anywhere, any time of the day. And again, as I said, let's say it's your email or Amazon website or eBay or something totally random like GoDaddy account. You can store all that information for once and for all in LastPass. And even within LastPass, there's an inbuilt browser that would just launch the entire website with you. And if you were to tap on sign in, it will just you know, put that information that you've stored and help you sign in automatically. Brilliant stuff. And as I said, you can also store your uh, credit card information. I'm not going to show you that one, but you know, it's always helpful. You don't have to carry your car, just store all information right there. Now, the next app I want to talk about is called Dialer Plus. But for Dialer Plus to work, please ensure that you have Contact Plus installed on your phone before that. Now, why is Dialer Plus so cool? Well, of course, it's got a T9, dictionary, uh, T9 dialer, which is not a big deal. Um, the great part is that you can store a lot of information about a contact within uh, within the app. Now, first things first, if you go into the menu, you've got a couple of options. You can set up you know, a specific ringtone, you can edit, delete, you can join it or link it to, the similar, um, to a similar contact profile. But the best part is, so let's say you've got all these icons on the left hand side. If you were to tap on, let's say, um, messaging, you can message from within the app. It does not have to go to another application, right? Um, let's say you were to tap on Twitter, it just opens right there. I mean, this is really cool. It does not have to, again and again, leave the contact the Dialer Plus app and go elsewhere. You can do all of that from within here. Great way to interact and uh, contact your contacts. The next app is Portal. It's basically the simplest file transfer option from your computer to your phone. Just type, just install Portal on your phone and then on your web browser, type portal.pushbullet.com. That's it. And then on your phone, tap scan and scan the barcode. That's it, your phone and your uh, computer are now connected and you can simply drag and drop files on your computer and it will all transfer to your phone. Obviously, you have to make sure that the computer and your phone are on the same network, the same Wi-Fi network. So let's say I was to select a file, that's it, there you go. It, can, it now shows on my phone. You know, I mean, it was on my computer, I just opened it through the browser and there you go, it's, it's right there. So it's really the simplest, of course there's AirDroid, which is uh, a much more comprehensive Wi-Fi file transfer system, but this one's a lot simpler, a lot, a lot simpler. It's just for transferring files from the computer to your desk, to your phone. So that's it guys, the top 10 apps for the month of September. Hope you guys really enjoyed watching this video and made some use of your smartphone, uh, at least more use of your smartphone than you were doing already. I will be back with the apps for October as well. So thank you for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to push that like button.